Hi, I'm Quinn Wildman, and today I'm going to give you a talk on creating your first interface application with Delphi. We're going to break this task up into three pieces. The first piece is going to be creating a simple database with IB Console. Secondly, we're going to create a simple application with Delphi. And then finally, we're going to go off and see how we can deploy it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that the interbase server is running. Now you'll notice that I have a whole bunch of different versions of Interbase listed here. This is because I have using the multi-instance interface. You probably won't have that, so you'll have just one Interbase. So the first thing we want to do is go off and run Server Manager. Now in, uh, Rad Studio and Delphi come with a developer edition of Interbase. The developer edition only runs for 48 hours. After 48 hours, you have to restart the server. So what you want to do is, if you're not sure, you want to stop the server and uh, and then when you run it again, I recommend you make it run as automatic and make it run as a Windows service. And now we've got the Interbase server running, and we'll be able to do all our connections. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to run IB Console, and we're going to go off and create a database. And we'll make it be in um, the MyDBs directory, and we'll call it uh, Who one Okay, we're going to use the default password, uh, master key. And now we're going to go off and create a simple table. Our first, and so our table, we're going to right, right click and do create. We'll make, make the name of our table be employees. Now a, a good table will always have a key and it'll be a single field key. It should be some type of nonsensical value. Um, typically this is just an integer value that we're going to do. I like calling my keys obj ID. That's an integer. All keys have to be not null, so we'll check not null. And then we'll create a first name field. And we're going to make that be a bar char 15. Last name field. And we'll make that be bar char 20. We'll create a higher date. Make that be date. And we'll add a gender field. And we'll make that be a star one. And then finally, we're going to add, add a uh, time entered. And we'll make that be a timestamp. And we're going to give this one a, a default value of current underscore timestamp. And then we're going to specify our primary key, which is obj ID. And we're going to add a check constraint. A check constraint is, uh, in this case, we're going to make sure that our gender field is either an M or an F. So I'm going to double click on here. Check gender equals M for gender equals F. Okay. We've got our table created. Now, so now we can look at our table here. The one thing we might look at here is here is the metadata that got created for this. So if we wanted to, in the future, we could use this metadata to create our own table. In fact, let's do that. So let's go off. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. Okay. We'll use that in just a moment. Now we're also going to go off and create a generator. So I'm going to right click just like I did a moment ago and create a generator. I'll call it my underscore gen. And now we're going to go off and do a little bit of SQL. Now we're going to create a trigger. Now we could create a trigger here. But instead, we're going to use the SQL window. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go off and create another table just to see if we can do that. So we'll create employees two, for example. Okay, and we're going to make it a little simpler. Turns out these quotes are not required, so we'll take them out. And now we'll execute that SQL. And now we have an employees two created. Okay, so now we're going to get a little SQL here. And it turns out I have an example I'm just going to copy. 
Okay, now that example here, you notice this example here has something about creating a generator. We won't do that part. We'll just do the creator, or the generator part. So I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. I'm going to paste it here. Execute that. And now I have my trigger created. So now that I have my trigger created, we're, we're ready to go off and uh, import some data. I notice employee two, employees 2 got created. Now we're going to go to the data tab. And we're going to in, import a common delimited file. So let's see what that file looks like first, just so you can see. This looks like that, standard common delimited file. Then we're going to right click and we're going to import data. We're going to point to that file you just saw. It turns out uh, everything I've got everything set up matching up. Click OK. 43 rows imported. And you notice that that uh, generator value that we created got filled in and the time entered got filled in. Okay, so everything looks good. Uh, now the last thing we'll do is let's create an index uh, for, that, uh, uh, for that table. So just like uh, um, our um, uh, creating our table and creating our generator, similar here. So we'll call this how about name. And it's going to go off of the employees table. We'll do last name and first name. There's the index we created. Notice that we can look at the metadata just like we could with our table. That's the SQL we can enter if we want. Okay. Now that our database is created, we're going to go use Delphi to go off and you and create a simple application. So we're going to create a new FireMonkey application. And now we're going to go put the components that we need on this. So first we're going to create our, vis our visual control. So we're going to go put a grid on it. And we'll put a panel. And finally, we'll put a net. And do a little tidying up here. We'll make our navigator align to the top. And make the panel align to the bottom. And they'll make our grid align client. Okay, and let's see. We'll do a couple little things here. Change the name. And let's change the caption. Okay, and then let's save all. Project like the existing one. So now we're going to go off and create a data module that's going to go hold our data. And then we're going to add a number of interface components. We're going to add a database. And a transaction and a data set. Now what we're going to do is we're going to drag that transaction onto the database and we'll drag the IB data set onto the database. Now everything's linked up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to double click on the IB database and set our connection property. Now we're going to browse to where that database just was. one and use the default login of sysdba and master key and we'll turn 
off the login prompt so we never prompt the log. Test that. Connection worked. We're all ready to go here. So now we're going to edit our IB data set. We're going to edit the SQL property. We're going to use our employees table. We're going to use the first name, last name, gender, hire date, and the obj ID field. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to generate the SQL that needs to happen for the for things when we refresh, delete, insert. So we're going to we're going to go to the data set editor, and our key field is just obj ID. Our update fields are everything except obj ID. And we're going to do generate SQL. Notice it generated all the SQL forms. Okay. Lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to go off and tell our uh, grid to use that. And we're going to do that using live binding. So we'll just drag our navigator to the string grid. Oh, oh, I forgot one thing here. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to have our main form use that data model. We'll use that. Now we're going to do live findings to tell our, our grid to use our data. There it goes up. Make that our navigator and we'll also our string grid. Okay, now we've got a couple other things to do here that things up just right. We're going to double click on our IB data set. We're going to add all the fields. Now what Delphi does is it makes that obj ID field and it's not null. It makes it be required. But it turns out we don't want it to be required because we're going to, um, we're going to, uh, that data is going to come from the server. So we're going to make that be not required. And then we also need to tell it to use our generator. So we're going to iterate the generator field. So we use my gen, and we're going to update the obj ID field. Now, lastly, what we're going to do is we're going to go edit the column for our grid. All the column. And then that, that obj ID field, we don't need that to be visible. Okay, everything's done. Let's make our data set be active. Save all. And I have unit one as a new one. That is that. And now let's run that. And now we've got a working application. We can do things like go to the end, go to the beginning. We can delete a record. And we can add a record. And, and not higher date, hopefully this. Go, and notice it added that, and we didn't even have to enter that magic obj ID number. Okay, now that we've created our application, the final thing we're going to do is we're going to work on deploying it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to the deployment wizard. Okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to add some files. We're going to click on Add Featured Files. Now, we could, if this was a uh, uh, way we have it right now, it would actually just be an interbase client. But what we're going to do is we're going to change this to be an interbase to go application. What we're going to do is we're going to pick all of the interbase to go files. And then I'm also going to add that employee database that we create. Okay. Now, what we want to do is because we're using the uh, because we're going to be using to go, we need to change our application just a little bit. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to the data model, and we're going to disconnect our database. So 
them, it connected be false. And we're going to change this to be from an IB server. We're going to make this be to IB embedded. Now, while we could, we could connect to Togo while we're in the IDE, I recommend against it because Togo only allows one connection. And if we connect in the IDE and we connect in our, our application is running, that isn't going to work. So we're going to add just a little bit of code here that's going to allow us to connect to our database um, when the application runs. So we're going to double click on the data module, brings up the create, create and I'm going to say B database one dot database name who one dot B and data set open. So now this is going to tell it to look for the database in the directory where our application is running. Okay, I see I missed a semicolon, so let's add that in there. And let's run that. And of course, that didn't work because right now, foo is not in the directory where my application is. So let's fix that. And we're going to fix that by, go by going to the deployment list. So now if we go off and deploy this, okay, we've got to pick our, uh, pick our platform. I'm already running PA server. Okay, I'm going to pick a profile that I already created. Now let's go look at that directory that it just created. There's my project. And notice there's foo1. And there's my project. Notice it put ib to dll in there. And it put some other files in. Okay, now I'm using the test deployment license for uh, Interbase to go. So that, that's, how, uh, that's how my licenses got in. And let's run the application here. Ah, it worked. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is this, as, as we have everything right now, it's going to just work. But the one problem will be is if we were to deploy this application to program files, it's not going to work. The reason it's not going to work is because in program files, you can't have, uh, you can't read and write directories files in the same directory. So what we're going to do is we're going to go off and modify that code, and we're going to make it so that our database, who one that IB, gets copied to the app data directory, and then we're going to load it from there instead. So let's go back and edit this code here. It turns out actually I have this code saved. There's what we want. So notice what that does is that's getting an environment variable called app data. Now this is Windows specific here, okay? And right now copy files are working, so we're gonna we're gonna get add that to our uses list. Okay, so that's Windows. So now this application won't work on a Macintosh. Okay, but we're gonna get the app data environment variable, which I know I can write to. Okay, that's the name of my database. Okay. The database now, uh, database is going to be here instead. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy that file there, okay? And then the data set will just open that, okay? Now, in a real application, you might want something a little bit more complicated that checks for the file, you know, is it there? If it's not there, just open it, et cetera. Okay, so let's save all of our work. And let's build that. And then finally, we'll go off and deploy it again. Okay, and now we're going to go run my project. And oh, that's right, because my code, I didn't change, give the right name for the database. So let's go off and fix that. And as I said, foo, and it should be foo1. So let's go off and build my project again. So we'll go off and deploy it again. And let's go run it again. Okay, I see I have some extra time here, so I'm going to show you a couple few things that, I, that I'd add if we had extra time.
Um, when we were using IB console, we imported our data. That would work just fine, but there's a lot better ways to do that. Typically, you would use some sort of data pump utility. So I'm going to show you a number of different ways that you might get your data in other ways. Uh, first of all, there's a lot of data pump utilities out there. Here's one that's on our Code Central website. So you can see the URL there is uh, cc.embarcadero.com slash item slash 23688. Uh, this utility, as you can see, hasn't been updated for a while, but it might work out pretty good for getting something going. Um, another way you might go is that Rad Studio actually has a data pump utility inside of it. So let's look to see where that is. So we'll go to the samples here. We just come with Rad Studio. Go to uh, Delphi, Database, DB Express, DBX Data Pump. And we'll just uh, load that project just to see that it loads. And then we can see that we've got something there. Um, another way you might go is to use Change Manager. If you've got Change Manager, Change Manager can do uh, data pump type utilities. And then uh, lastly, in charge of uh, getting your data, you can also do something with Interbase called Foreign Files. A foreign file is basically a text file uh, that's a fixed length file. Um, and then you can define a foreign file there. Uh, that looks like that. And so now if we go, let's see, the foreign file section is just a little bit low, below here. Here it is right here. So you create something like that. So that's a fixed length file. We've got a file called file.txt for the, you know, first name, 10 characters, last name, 10 characters, higher day, eight characters, and then in between each line, one characters for this one. Now, typically on Windows, you would have two characters. The one character would be something if you came from Linux or a Macintosh. You can see this is on page 102. And if we go up here, we can see the section here. And it's uh, talking about uh, creating tables here, a bunch of creating table stuff. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is when we did the um, created our generator, I wanted to show you an example of how um, creating that generator looks in the documentation. So this is in the uh, create trigger section. And if we go down just a little bit, here's some code that looks almost exactly like, uh, actually, uh, right here. Um, that was actually this one. Looks almost exactly like the code that we did in the example earlier. Okay. And then the last thing we're going to talk about is it turns out uh, behind the scenes, I'd created a couple environment variables um, to help me do what I'm doing. Now, if you're not using multi-instance for uh, Interbase, you don't need to do this at all. But if you are using interbase uh, multi instance so you might find this helpful. So we're just going to go look at environment variables on our system. Click the environment var variables button. So I have something called an IV protocol environment variable that I've set up. This is the label name for the instance that I've created. And then I've also created an environment variable called interbase, which is the location where interbase is installed. And then we can also see those settings in the IDE by going to Tools, Options, and then go to Environment Variables. And you'll see IB Protocol there, and you see the Interbase Environment Variable there. And that's the end of our talk for today. I invite your questions. There's a question, there's always a question about benchmarking anything, programs, code, well, data, benchmark, databases well, and benchmark so, is benchmarking is a tricky thing and I mean I think in the perfect world we would have somebody dedicated 100 percent of time to do that um, but I would say I what I would say is probably I would expect the speed of interbase to be comparable to uh, anybody else so, you know uh, it's not, is it going to be remarkably faster no slower no same ballpark probably 10 to 20 percent is my guess yeah, here the specific ALF was asking about Firebird and Postgres, for example. But again, there's you know there's there's benchmarking and people have been coming up with benchmarks. What's a real benchmark for your application? If you have a real world database with a real world application sending SQL statements to it, create dump the SQL out, create an interbase version of the database, send the same SQL to it. Right. Like yeah. Yeah. I mean hardware, memory, processors. Yep, that's exactly right. There's a lot of different things, and you could have your app, two different applications could come out differently. But we haven't we haven't done anything specific. No, as we, far have as we have not. We yeah. have not done any specific benchmark testing. And again, Airbase comes with all the server side, all the support for adding 
CPU licenses, if it, for sure, multiple it, CPU well, no, support. For most people, we've got in the box what they need. If we've got uh, eight CPUs supported in the box. Okay. But if you needed more than that, yes, there are additional CPU licenses you could buy. Okay. So if you got the CPUs and you got the memory, right? You can get uh, you can get support for it. Um, Rick was asking about: uh, Are there facilities for creating tables in data, SQL databases in Airbase, well, for example, yeah, with way, Delphi? Well, the way I would do that is you could just use the TIB SQL component, okay, and you put your uh, put your SQL in the the SQL property for that, and just call execute, and there you go. You got you get your table. You can you could run, really run any SQL statement that way, not just creating a table. Insert, update, delete, whatever you want. So other statement types, put it in the SQL property. And call, and call execute. execute. Call yeah. execute. Exactly right. I'll just send it directly to the server. And call the execute. I hate that name of that method. Execute that <laughs> to call the execute method on the SQL query, um, or I guess TIB query. Well, that's well, that's what I was saying. TIB query. Yeah, TIB query. I think that there's is the also TIB an query. execute or T SQL query. I have to look. Uh, well, sure. Well, T SQL query that would be yeah. with D, that would with be DB with DBX. Right. We've been talking about using uh, 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 IBX here, but certainly DBX could do it the same way. Yep. And yeah, TIB. I mean, one of the things I use when I'm talking to interface, I I almost always, unless I'm flip flopping between databases for a demo, I use I use the Interbase Express controls. It gives me so much more direct control over Interbase. So for those people, if you look on the component palette, you'll see Interbase Express. Right, it's actually called Interbase, right? And so in the, oh, it's called Interbase. Right. right. So okay. in my talk, we we use the the TIB database, TIB transaction, and TIB uh, data set. But the TI there's the TIB SQL, which it turns out TIB data set basically for a lot of things it does uses TIB SQL in the background. Yep. And again, there are all sorts of other components that are available there that get you at other parts of the Interbase API. Sure, right. Well, there's also, we, we, t we talked about the uh, interface tab. There's also an interface admin tab, okay? So th those could do all kinds of admin things, which we didn't talk about today. Things like backup, uh, restore, uh, find out who's connected to my uh, server, things like that. And, okay. Um, and then Rick made the comment, cool, generate the SQL the way of a professional. Yep. Yes. For his comments, I'll give him a smiley there. Um, is there a way to create fields on client data sets? Yes, you can create fields, just call create field method. But then he asks, Rick asks, can I then take the client data set? Is there a call on client data set to create a table? And I don't know of any yeah, method in client data set. Now. Yeah. Um, do you find 64 bit interface to be substantially more robust than 32 bit? Well, if you, uh, I mean, well, You'd need an application that need lots of memory to do that. Now, do I have any applications like that myself? No. But if we needed to address lots of memory, then yeah, it could be. Okay. So for the additions, there's 32 bit support for Interbase on what platforms? Uh, 32 bit support. Well, now Windows, Mac, w Windows, and Linux. Mac. That's so right, Mac, and, and then. Uh, uh, but Windows, Mac, Linux, and Solaris. Okay. Now for XE3, okay, we don't have all those platforms. So for XE3, 32-bit server on Windows only. Okay. What about 64-bit? 64-bit would be would be Windows would be Windows only. Okay. And then for XE, we have all the platforms available for XE. Okay. okay. But more to come, right? For XE3. Well, certainly more to come. Yep. Certainly, uh, we yeah. And, and as, as demand requires it also. And I think Sriram is going to cover it as well, but there's different editions. You were using the developer edition. Well, actually, I wasn't using or, the developer or you edition. Oh, you, you uh, mentioned well, I, the developer edition. I mentioned edition. the developer edition. At okay. the very beginning, I said, well, if you're using the developer edition, you'd want to restart. But it turns out everything I did was exactly the same for developer edition or the server edition or, desktop. or trial or desktop. Exactly. Okay. All, the, all those editions would work exactly the same with what I did there. Oh, let's see. Um, why is it so difficult to get Interbase spec into corporate IT departments, giving its robust performance? Interbase spec, or approved, oh, or approved um, uh, inside I don't of corporate. Know. What do you think? You have any ideas, David? That's like a sales question, isn't it? That's probably. I, I'm not a salesperson either, but I I run into things like big organization myopia, where it's Oracle, DB two. 
Microsoft and everything else doesn't matter uh, at the enterprise, at the big enterprise right. level, at the right. department level or specific applications. Uh, Interface, of course, is great for embedded applications. Yes. We find that used in retail stores, in, inside embedded applications. There's Interface inside of a security screening tunnel luggage thing by, what is it, Stevens Security or whatever. You find Interface embedded in all sorts right, of things. There's a haircutting salon out there yeah. that uses Interface a lot. Uh, there's retail stores in, in South America, in India. Uh, we're interbase. It's it's inside of uh, military embedded systems. It's inside the Motorola 911 call processing system that they resell to municipalities and and cities and organizations. There's just whenever you need to, what is it? Install. Let's see. Develop, deploy, tag. install, forget. Right. Or, that was a tagline we had at yeah, one time. Yes. Yeah. It's like just just keeps running. Don't need a DBA marching along with the army. In fact, we've had some people with really old deployment deployments that run forever, and the first thing that goes away is their licensing. Everything else just keeps working for years and years and years. Uh, Alpha's asking about uh, why not use Postgres SQL. Postgres SQL. I, I can never say Postgres SQL, um, or or something else. Well, Alpha. I mean. Yeah, I'm not an expert at other people's databases. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think we did have a paper at one time comparing Interbase to MySQL. Mm -hmm. So that is that is out there someplace. Yeah. I'm not sure if that paper compared to Postgres or not. Uh, uh, Joe's asking a question about what methods would you use for streaming a blob using Interbase Express? What methods would I use? Well, you, you could just, the there's just the T, regular T blob field, I think, yeah. would, would generally just work just like any database. Yeah. So all the fields that you would use in Delphi, right? Uh, you know, a memo field gets associated with a text blob, exactly. And an image blob gets associated with a, you know, a, a blob yes, on exactly. Interbase. Yes, exactly. The one thing you can do with Interbase, there's a a subtype you can specify that's optional, and so some there are some things about you can do specify subtypes to give basically an application a hint about what type of data you've got. I mean, you'll see that. I think there's. Uh, a sample database that we ship, BioLife, uh, the BioLife yep. GD, yes. dot GDB, yes. which has um, both a text blob and a bitmap blob. Right. There, there's the, the FishFact demo. Yeah, the FishFact Fish Fact demo has Classic. graphics in it. Yes. Yep. So if you want to see how blobs, they're just defined in there. You can look and see the metadata. Just right. load it up into IB console or right. So that has a, that choice. has some sort of bitmap graphic, a picture of the fish, yep. and also a memo which has the textual description of the fish. Um. Here's a question from Johan. This does come up as it relates to the database tools. He's got the ultimate edition, and uh, which includes uh, Rapid SQL, DB Change Manager, and DB Optimizer. And DB Change Manager works with Interbase, supports Interbase. I believe so. And to be yeah. honest, I'm not an expert at those tools. Yeah. But, uh, so ER Studio does, which is part of the Architect Edition. Um, the developer version of ER Studio and DB Change Manager works with Interbase. So is that used? Uh, I know those tools either use JDBC or they use ODBC. Yeah, right? they use they use a bridge to ODBC or 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 I think the other area is, is Rapid SQL. For example, do things like SQL debugging needs additional API support right. in the SQL engine that is on the roadmap for Interbase, but not currently there. Right. And so Rapid SQL, when it's doing certain things like, again, stepping through trigger code and store procedure code and so on, uh, setting breakpoints and such, evaluating variables and so on, needs API support that, that is on the roadmap to be added in the future with Interbase to support right. the database tools. And the same thing goes for APIs in, in uh, DB Optimizer looks, gets information from the SQL engine to understand what's going on in the optimization of SQL right. and, and right. execution. Right, Interbase does have plans, so you could look at the yep. plans with IB console yep. and do that sort of thing there. The one thing you can also check out, Johan, is what was it, IB Planalyzer? That's right. Which also will give you information. Right, that should be available from a In CoCentral, right. right. Just look for IB Planalyzer, P-L-A-N-A-L-Y-Z-E-R. I believe that's right. Yeah. And by Greg Stentz at one point. Yeah. So you can take a look at that. Um, how secure is Interbase, and is it secure from crackers, is it denial of service attacks, et cetera? Um, well, we've certainly gotten, uh, we've done a lot of work in that area through times. We, we hope we've got everything right there. Um, there's sort of uh, a couple couple different, I think the biggest thing that we've done in that area is our OTW, that stands for over the wire encryption. So if you're using OTW, 
Um, I can't imagine how anybody could get get across using that. That's basically using SSL to, for the transport layer there. And you can also encrypt columns, tables, encrypt, uh, whole databases. Right, right. So we're really hackers, of course. Now hackers are really talking about. At least I think about going across the wire. But if somebody accesses your physical device, then exactly like you said, you could also encrypt your database. So it could either be your database or you could encrypt columns. So somebody physically got your data as well. They stole your laptop. If it's encrypted, they couldn't get to it either. Oh, Stephen Paul. Hey, Stephen. Let's see. Oh, that's only 930 for you in the UK if you're in the UK right now. He says embed, deploy, relax. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that's a good one. I, you know, I, That was the old tagline. I should remember it. Well, it still works. It still yes, works. of course. Uh, real in a real world typical situation, to use interbase components with ID rather than standard data snap SQL connection um, methods. Uh, well, it kind of depends, you know, what you need, right? Yep. If, if you need data snap, that's what you need. Yeah, and uh, so for data snap, sure. I think if the choice really, Ralph, is between DB Express and Interbase Express. Uh, Interbase Express gives you more support for all the APIs of Interbase versus right. I mean, just the way I like to say, general access, right? Yeah, the way I like to say it is if Interbase all the way, baby, that's what I'm doing, IBX is for you. If you think you're going to use Interbase today, Oracle tomorrow, uh, MySQL the next day, then use DB Express. And in some cases, I use both, so there we go. But I'm showing demos, not you know, doing production. Right. Um. Let's see. How to create a brand new database in IB Console? Just uh, well, that was right at the beginning of the talk. Yeah, IB Console database create database, right? Yeah, exactly right. Maybe you missed the beginning of the talk. At the beginning yeah. of the talk, we had that. Yep. Yeah. So just uh, start up IB Console and right into the database menu, create database. Right. I think it's actually right click. It's it's a, it's right click on database. Oh, on the local. Oh, There's okay. There's probably actually a menu choice to it. Yeah, I, I believe that... the way I did it is I did right click, and you can either add or create there. Uh, the operations guide manual should talk about how to do that too. Yeah. Where can I find documentation regarding regarding using external tables? I... External tables. Well, actually, we cover about that in, in my talk okay. too. That's in the data definition guide. Okay. Um, and uh, I, I right near the end of the talk, we talked about that. So uh, we'll, uh, that's basically an external table. That's a text file that's fixed length. Okay. And you basically say, uh, just like we saw in the talk, you say create table, blah, 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 pointing to that file. And then you could actually do an insert into a regular interface table from that. And the section of the documentation I talked about um, in the talk talks all about that. And Stephen, uh, just Stephen Ball again, posted uh, a couple links. One was to uh, more documentation. The other one is about it points to the database in action interface labs area with tutorials. So those are in the Q and A log for everyone. Um, just looking. Okay, we took care of that. Um, I, I don't know if this is for you or not, Quinn. There's this discussion about what about NoSQL databases and that whole wave of NoSQL and will this affect interbase development or 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 direction going yeah, it's forward. More of a, I think it's more of a product management yeah. question. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, yeah. I mean, there's going to be a world of SQL databases for a long, long time to come. Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, the relational data models live just like object. I mean, I, I think about, you know, models. when I came into the database world, I started using DBase. That's where I started, and there was no, no SQL back then. And of course, not, this DBase is still out there, but not, I don't think people are using it. And of course, we had Paradox as well. Yeah. No, not a SQL database either, really. Okay. Send all. Um, I think that unless I missed something, is there a way to do visual table or database design? Visual um, of so the data were, explorer. Well, can I? Are you talking about visual visual for creating a database? He's just saying, yeah, visual table designer in Delphi. Is there a table this visual table designer? Visual table designer in Delphi for yeah. like in like, the data like, explorer. Even, you, even like linking tables are talking. About. Or just creating a table visually. Oh, oh I like, see. Creating visual table in Delphi. Or creating a table visually. Right, in creating Delphi. table visually in Delphi. Um, you can create a connection in DB Explorer. You can do SQL queries in the SQL window in Data Explorer in the right, IDE. Right. Right. Um, Firing all sorts of SQL statements. You know, there is a right mouse click drop a table 
no oh, shoot i don't have an id on this machine you know if you're in the data explorer and you've got a a, a, a connection string you know a connection for a different mm -hmm. database type there's i think a right mouse click alter table drop table uh, if you've got your ID up there, on I don't your machine. have my ID up here. We'll, I don't know yeah. how much time we have left. All oh, we got 15 minutes. Oh, okay. But we're also well, I can, uh, a break, I can, uh, but see what I can come yeah, up. Yeah, bring with it up. There's if you're in the Data Explorer and you point to one of your connection strings that points not, to a database. Of course, that would be using DB Express, but that's not a problem. Yeah, if you right mouse click, there's some choices, not only for modifying the string, but if you're on a specific table in a database like in a, like the employee GDB or the BioLife GDB. I think when you select a table, there's a right mouse click and do something besides bring up the SQL window in the data explorer. But uh, I always have to see it in front of me. It's a brain memory visualization thing. Uh, and then Stephen was mentioning IB console is a nice way to create fields and tables, foreign keys, etc. Yep. Which is what we talked about, at yep. the which is what I did at the beginning. Yep. Which is great. Um, Oh, and then there's also a product, IB Expert. Yes, that's right. yeah. I, I haven't used that, but I've heard a lot of people out there that do like that product. It would be kind of an alternative uh, to IB Console. You still do updates through views in Interface. Can you still do updates through views? Um, yeah, you could do that. This stuff still works. Sure. Yep. And the answer for that stored procedure was yes. Uh... How extensively do you take advantage of MGA? MG, oh, the, uh, the, talking about the multi multi generational, generational architecture. architecture. Well, that's I mean that's 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 still there. It's always been there in Interbase. I mean, so it works the way it's always worked. Uh, we used to make that as a big selling feature. Um, uh, we haven't talked. We have, I think we haven't talked about that much in recent times. But the, the idea of the multi generational architecture is most databases store uh, have kind of like log files, and you've got to manage the log files. For basically all your deltas, whereas Interbase stores that all inside the database, and so it's self-managing. If you want to know more about that, uh, come to the product address uh, with uh, with Sriram, and he could tell you all the ins and outs about that. Yep. Um, let's see. Ralph is asking. I think you said that a generated exe would not run with the database file in the same directory. If I understood correctly, what is this? Uh, okay, what, we, what I was talking about there is, so if the if your application is not in program files, no problem. It'll work just fine, okay? But if you're on Vista or Windows 7, you can't write to the, you can't write to files inside of program files, okay? And so that's, what's all, that's what that's all that's talking about there is, so we, at, at the one part I had copied the database to the app directory, mm -hmm. okay? That way it wouldn't be... You know, it wouldn't be under program files, and you can access the database. Or you could turn off user access control. Well, yes, that would that would be uh, that would be another way yeah, to do turn it. Turn that right. off completely. Right. So, and, you know, if you're worried about that, just worry. don't don't install your application in the program files, and then yeah. you don't have to worry about that. Yeah, I, I put my databases in backslash data, sometimes on dry a, another Mac map volume out on servers. Right, but if you're going to deploy an application, yep. then you've got to have some way to move that data out there. Uh, I don't know if you, I had to walk out for a moment for a, a exec call that happens on Tuesdays. Uh, Interbase to go. So deploying Interbase to go based applications, there's just a DLL or a dilib. Uh, that right? Yes, that's exactly right. And we actually, we talked about in the in, uh, in my talk, what I did is basically we used the deployment manager. So if you use the deployment manager, you basically, in the example there, we actually, we've, you check a couple boxes and it just deploys all the files you need for to go. In my talk, I added the database that we were talking about. Of yep. course, you, add, you added the database, so you've got your exe, you've got the to go part, yep. and off you go. You've got everything. And with XE three, we give you everything you need. And if you have client data set, then you have to deploy Midas. Right. Uh, if you're deploying that, and that's under project uh, deployment. There's these feature files, and you can choose, and you can add additional files. Right. And also, we we didn't deploy it this way. But there's also Interbase client is new for XE3 as well. So if you're making just a, a client application that would basically deploy GDS32.dll if it's a 30-bit application. Or what and is it, IB client? I think it's IB clients, I think. I would, to be honest, for 64-bit? I forget. I always forget what the DLL is for 64-bit. Yeah. The way you can know is you go in uh, into Data Explorer again, have a database connection for Interbase, right mouse click, or any of the databases, right mouse click, look at the connection information. And that comes from DBX drivers, and you'll see the name of all the different Macintosh client, the 64-bit client, the 
and you won't see the standard. Right. Or if, you're in the de- if you're in the deployment wizard, you could see the files there too. Yeah, through the f- through feature files and exactly. choose the check the checkbox or expand plus the the tree of, of exactly. files. Right. Yep. You could see what's going on there. Yep. Uh, a problem with app data is that for most users, it is hidden. So if someone had to has to do with files there, they have to expose all hidden folders. Yeah. Well, sometimes you want the database hidden. Yeah. You don't yeah. want people to be able to go in there and delete it or do things with it. Right, exactly. If they're users, if you've deployed an application for them. Right. But yeah, Alf, Alf got it. And again, thanks, Quinn. And uh, oh, Ralph says, thank you guys for Code Rage. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, Ralph, thanks. 